So in this example, ladies and gentlemen, if we are looking at this and we want to write down things that we know, um, you obviously can see by kind of writing out the equation, you know, first thing I did is kind of doing step, step three and step four, but that's not really helping us obviously solve um, or getting our portion. But you can say like as far as our little picture here, I could say, all right, well, here's kind of part of step three and here's part of kind of step four. Now, as far as our defining our variables, there's a couple things that we need to obviously kind of look at. And I'm going to, again, kind of skip over, um, skip over things and kind of look at the question again, trying to see what we're trying to understand. It says, how fast is the water dropping? Um, at the instant, the water is three inches deep. So they're, they're asking for a rate, right? We're looking for how fast is it dropping? So that's going to be, if you look at, if we were to actually continue this picture here, we could say that, so this is three inches deep. So the whole thing is three. That means from here to here is 1.5. And then all the way down, we can say that's going to be our height. So if we kind of pull out that box, or pull out that triangle, I'm sorry, we can say 1.5, and we could say that's going to be height. So what they're asking is, how far is that h dropping? So how, how much is h changing when our height is going to be at 3? So um, a couple things that we know that we need to be able to figure out, we're going to be looking for dh dt. That's going to be our final answer, is how, how is the height changing? Does that kind of make sense from that question? How fast is the height, or our, yeah, how fast is the water dropping, which basically means is how, how much is the height changing? Um, and so that's what we're going to be solving for. We have our h. We know that we want to see how fast it's changing at a given time when h is equal to a certain value, which is going to be 3 inches. And then the next question is something, um, how fast is the radius? So that's going to be a different question. So that's a separate question. So let's deal with this first question first of all. So we're given h. We're, we want to find uh, d of h of, and d of t. And h equals 3. Um, oh, I'm sorry. And we also have and loses at a constant rate of 2 cubic inches. I'll just actually underline this. So we know that uh, the cup springs of Lucan loses water, which is going to be the volume. So we could say that the volume is losing at 2 cubic inches. So we can say that dv dt is going to equal uh, negative. Now, that's going to be q, uh, 2 cubic inches. But that's since we're losing it, it's we're going to have negative 2 cubic inches. Does everybody see why it would be negative? Because you're actually losing it. You're not gaining volume. Obviously, if you're gaining volume, it would be positive. But if, like in the balloon, if you're blowing up a balloon, you're gaining volume, that would be a positive. And if you're losing, then it's going to be negative. All right, does everybody follow kind of what I've done so far? I've just kind of organized information. And then again, I didn't really follow my one, two, three, four. I kind of broke down the problem. And again, there's two questions in here, so we're just going to do one at a time. Um, but I at least found my variables. I found an equation. And then I've kind of drawn a diagram to understand things. Now, there is a, um, there is an issue, though. Because if we're going to go and take the derivative of this, what I notice is I'm going to actually take the derivative of r. right? And again, looking at this first question, do we know anything about the radius, how the radius is changing, or anything, and so forth? No, right? So can you guys see there being a problem of solving for dh dt if you have r as well as dr dt? Do you guys see that having being a problem, foreseeable problem, right? That's an implicit. You gotta, we still have to solve for something, so we got to have something for r. We don't, know how, we don't know what the r is at 3, nor do we know how, how much the r is changing. As the water goes out, we don't know how that radius is changing. So that's a big problem. And that even comes into our second question. So what we can do to kind of avoid that problem for right now is find out how the radius relates to the height as it's kind of going down. Because you guys can see that this is basically r is to your height, right? So we can find a relationship here as far as how, does, how is uh, r relating to your height as it's going down. There's a typical relationship here. So I can say that 
um, 1.5 is to r, at, or sorry, 1.5 is to h, as r is to h. And, oh, I'm sorry, 1.5, oops, what did I not find out? Oh, I'm sorry, it's four inches deep. My bad. That's four. I forgot to write that in. Did I? I did. Okay. Three inches across, four inches deep. Underlining things might be important. Sorry, as the, rate, as the radius is 1.5, the height is four inches, so therefore we have r is to h. So we have 1.5 is to four as r is to h. And now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to find out what r is equal to because then what we can do is if we can replace r in terms of h, then we can eliminate having to deal with r. So just do a little cross multiply, even though I hate cross multiply. And you can now say, um, One point five divided by four or you could do three halves divided by four. One point five divided by four is the same thing as three eighths H. What? No, we want to solve for R. Thank you. What did I do? We have why did I put two H's there? What the heck's wrong with me? Yeah, that's supposed to be an R right there. I like wrote an H for some reason. So it's 1.5 divided by 4. Um, actually, I'll just leave that as. Well, does it come into play? Yeah. Let's do. Let's keep it as a fraction. So therefore, R is going to equal 3 eighths H. And I'll keep this, I do, I'm going to avoid um, decimals because if you do 1.5 divided by 4, you get 0.375. And basically, you guys can um, convert that to 3 halves, and then dividing by 4 would give you 3 eighths, leaving it in fractional terms. 1.5, just changing it to 3 halves, divided by 4. gives you the 3 eighths. Now, this is very important. This is very important. Take up your hat, please. Because now I can plug this in to 1 third times pi times 3 h over 8 times h. That's squared. And now what I can do is I can simplify this, where now it's only going to be in terms of h. So volume equals 1 third pi 9h squared over 64 times h. Those will divide out. Volume equals 3 pi over 64 and then h cubed. h squared times h. Because you had to square the h inside here and then multiply it by h. So therefore, you're getting h cubed. And I'm just writing the constant out in front. Because this is all a constant, and this is my one variable. Yes, question? Do we not know what h is? Uh, we do not know. We do know what h is. We do. But we're not plugging it. But if you solve for h, if you plug in h, what are you going to get? The, the volume. Is that what they're asking, what the volume is? No. No, they're asking for? Um, actually, they're not, they're not even asking it. They're asking, how is the h changing with respect to time? right? So all I'm doing is, by replacing r with h, I'm getting rid of r, because we don't know anything about r when it's dropping at 2 cubic inches per minute and what r is at 3 inches. We don't know. We know, uh, I'm sorry, at we, um, 
we know what the R is initially, but we don't know when, once it's lost that, that much water. So what I'm doing is I created a relationship with R and H by using proportions to now replace the R with the H. So now I have this formula. With this is um, in terms of just the height at, for the volume. And now what I can do is now I can differentiate with respect to time. So if I differentiate with respect to time, I get dv dt equals bring the 3 down to multiply it, I get 9 pi over 64 h squared dh dt. Right? Because if I take d over dt of both sides, does everybody follow me on the next step? I basically just differentiated d over dt. So now we're taking the derivative with respect to time. And then again, what is dh dv dt? Negative 2. What is h? 3. H is 4. No, no, no. Well, yes, it's originally at 4. But what they're asking is they're asking what is dh dt when the water is 3 inches deep. So that's what we want to know. Is we want to know what dh dt is when this is 3. Does that make sense? OK. So now I'll just plug in that information. So I have negative 2 equals 9 pi over 64 times 9 dh dt. I don't know where my calculator is. I guess I'll just break it and use this. And then what I get is um, times 9 over 81. Final answer is negative 2. That becomes 81. So times 64 over 81 pi equals dh dt, which is equal to or approximate negative 0.503 inches per minute. How is it what? What I did was I divided. So you have, um, without you talking over there, you have dh dt times this. So this becomes 81 pi over 64 multiplied by the reciprocal on both sides. So therefore, it's 64 divided by 81 pi times negative 2. And then if you just multiply that and then divide it by that, you'll get negative 0 0.503. And then obviously, we're looking at um, the uh, change, uh, change in your height um, per time, which time is in minutes. And our change in height is in inches. So that would be inches per minute. Now we're not done yet. There is a second question, so we want to make sure we answer that second question.